speech, we connect, and we exchange views, frankly, honestly, in a candid manner. And this is exactly what we did yesterday when he was at the Foreign Office. We had an extensive meeting, in my view a constructive one, in which we discussed a host of things, but the particular focus was how to steer the peace process forward. A challenging task. I would also like to add the timing of this visit is significant. Why do I give so much importance to this timing? Because it is taking place after a number of historic events. The peace agreement signed on the 29th of February in Doha between Taliban and the US was a historic uh, agreement. I recall my first engagement with Secretary Pompeo when he visited Islamabad, when I had just taken over as foreign minister, and he very clearly said, the road to Washington leads via Kabul. We have traveled far beyond Kabul. But I do understand how important Kabul is for Pakistan. And that agreement, and the fact to bring the Taliban to the negotiating table wasn't easy. But it happened. Reaching an understanding wasn't easy, but it happened. The decisions taken by the lower jirga on the 9th of August weren't easy, but they were taken. The commencement of the intra-Afghan negotiations on the 12th of September is a step forward. The second round of APAPs that took place on the 31st of August in Kabul, in my view, was again a step in the right direction. Prime Minister's telephonic conversation with President Ashraf Ghani on the 25th of September was positive. He was extended an invitation, which he has accepted, and inshallah will be visiting Afghanistan. And this visit, a three-day visit of the chairman of the High Council, in my view, is a significant development. So I welcome you and your delegation to the Institute and to Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, where we have arrived today did not happen overnight. This convergence evolved over a period of time. We learned through experience mistakes. Unless you recognize them, how do you overcome them? Today, there is a new environment internationally, supportive of a political settlement. Today, the peace process has regional support, and it cannot move forward without regional support. Today, there's a greater realization bilaterally in Afghanistan and Pakistan 
that if we want a prosperous future for ourselves, we need peace. And that realization is dawning on us, on you, me, and our nations. And that's the positive uh, thing that I see. A realization has evolved over the years that there is no military solution to the Afghan conflict. This voice, which was often not heard, has finally been heard. Today, there is recognition that a negotiated political settlement is perhaps the only and the best way forward. So this is a unique opportunity, a historic opportunity. And it must be seized. It has to be seized by the leadership of Afghanistan. Today, reduction in violence leading to a ceasefire is a prerequisite and a necessity for peace. Today, I can say this with confidence, and Dr. Abdullah shared this with me yesterday, that the overwhelming majority of Afghans one piece. I do recognize, so does he, that there are and will always be spoilers. We have to keep our eye on them. We have to remain cognizant. They are. Let's not forget that there are many who have benefited from the war economy. And they could have different interests. But the overwhelming majority feels that this is the right way forward. And that's a positive development. We feel, and I believe, Afghans and only Afghans can determine the future of Afghanistan. A sustainable peace can only come from within Afghanistan. It cannot be imposed on Afghanistan. You have to feel in a particular way. You have to move forward with conviction. And only then will you overcome the challenges and the hurdles that are in front of us. All sides have to work together. Work together for a peaceful, prosperous, stable Afghanistan, which is Pakistan's desire, as mentioned by the Director General. Ladies and gentlemen, peace has many dividends. I'd like to share a few with you. If we want regional connectivity, and I see a lot of opportunity for Pakistan when I look west of Pakistan, beyond Afghanistan, into Central Asia, the regional connectivity to promote trade and investment, then peace is essential. It cannot happen without peace. If we want to see CASA 1000 and the Tapi gas pipeline to become a reality, then peace is a prerequisite. If we want to enhance bilateral trade, and there are huge opportunities between us, and promote investments into this, re into this region, then peace is essential. If we want 
Afghan refugees to return back to their homeland in a dignified, honorable way, then peace is a requirement. And there is another requirement, recognition of the mistakes of the past, unless we recognize that. How do we move forward? Let's not shy away from reality. Let's accept reality and add a new chapter to our bilateral relations. Build a common future for ourselves. Whenever we have cooperated, we have benefited. We have, we have stood by each other, and you know that. We have supported Afghans and Afghanistan, and you've gained from that. So, a relationship of cooperation and understanding is the only way forward. I do realize that the road ahead is going to be bumpy. It's not going to be easy. And let's not fool ourselves. It won't be handed over to us on a platter. One will have to work for it. But I want to highlight to you, sir, as the chairman of the Peace Council, the name of the game is patience. You will have to be patient. The school that I went to and the Prime Minister went to, its motto was perseverance commands success. So we will have to be persistent and patient. Security and stability is what we need and our security and stability is interlinked. So I want to close my talk by giving you and through you to the people of Afghanistan a clear message and through these honorable delegates of yours. And my message is we have no favorites. My message is we do not want to meddle in your internal affairs. My message is we respect and want to respect your sovereignty, your independence, and your territorial integrity. And my message is, whatever consensus evolves through your dialogue and your negotiations, we, as the people of Pakistan, will accept the will of the people of Afghanistan. And that's the way it ought to be. It is important for us. And if I can borrow from the book of uh, President, former President Ayub Khan, Dr. Abdullah, we want to be friends, not masters. And that's the paradigm shift. And that's the new realization and the recognition if we have to coexist in peace and build a common future. So I conclude by wishing you success. And I want to assure you and your delegation of our complete support. Thank you. مذاکرات میں امن عمل پر تفصیلی گفتگو ہوئی انٹرا افغان مذاکرات امن عمل کے لیے اہمیت کے حامل ہیں افغانستان